Molten salt batteries are a class of battery that uses molten salts as an electrolyte and offers both a high energy density and a high power density. Traditional use once thermal batteries can be stored in their solid state at room temperature for long periods of time before being activated by heating. Rechargeable liquid metal batteries are used for electric vehicles and potentially also for grid energy storage. To balance out intermittent renewable power sources such as solar panels and wind turbines. For comparison, LiPo 4 lithium iron phosphate batteries store 90 to 110 watt hours per kilogram, and the more common Liku 2 lithium iron batteries store 150 to 200 watt hours per kilogram. Nano lithium titanate batteries store 72 watt hours per kilogram and can provide a power of 760 W per kilogram. History Thermal batteries originated during World War II when German scientist Georg Otto Erb developed the first practical cells, using a salt mixture as an electrolyte. Erb developed batteries for military applications, including the V-1 flying bomb and the V-2 rocket, and artillery fusing systems. None of these batteries entered field use during the war. Afterwards, Erb was interrogated by British intelligence. His work was reported in The Theory and Practice of Thermal Cells. This information was subsequently passed on to the United States Ordnance Development Division of the National Bureau of Standards. When the technology reached the United States in 1946 it was immediately applied to replacing the troublesome liquid-based systems that had previously been used to power artillery proximity fuses. They were used for ordnance applications since World War II and later in nuclear weapons. The same technology was studied by Argonne National Laboratories in the 1980s for use in electric vehicles. Thermal batteries Technologies Thermal batteries use an electrolyte that is solid and inactive at ambient temperatures. They can be stored indefinitely yet provide full power in an instant when required. Once activated, they provide a burst of high power for a short period to 60 minutes or more, with output ranging from watts to kilowatts. The high power is due to the high ionic conductivity of the molten salt, which is three orders of magnitude greater than that of the sulfuric acid in a lead acid car battery. One design uses a fuse strip along the edge of the heat pellets to initiate burning. The fuse strip is typically fired by an electrical igniter or squib by application of electric current. Another design uses a center hole in the middle of the battery stack into which the high-energy electrical igniter fires a mixture of hot gases and incandescent particles. This allows much faster activation times versus hundreds of milliseconds for the edge strip design. Battery activation can be accomplished by a percussion primer, similar to a shotgun shell. The heat source should be gasless. The standard heat source typically consists of mixtures of iron powder and potassium perchlorate in weight ratios of 88 twelfths, 86 fourteenths, or 84 sixteenths. The higher the potassium perchlorate level, the higher the heat output. This property of unactivated storage has the double benefit of avoiding deterioration of the active materials during storage, and eliminating capacity loss due to self-discharge until the battery is activated. In the 1980s lithium alloy anodes replaced calcium or magnesium anodes with cathodes of calcium chromate, vanadium or tungsten oxides. Lithium silicon alloys are favored over the earlier lithium aluminium alloys. The corresponding cathode for use with the lithium alloy anodes is mainly iron disulfide replaced by cobalt disulfide for high power applications. The electrolyte is normally a eutectic mixture of lithium chloride and potassium chloride. More recently, other lower melting eutectic electrolytes based on lithium bromide, potassium bromide, 
and lithium chloride or lithium fluoride have also been used to provide longer operational lifetimes. They are also better conductors. The so-called all-lithium electrolyte based on lithium chloride, lithium bromide, and lithium fluoride is also used for high-power applications because of its high ionic conductivity. A radioisotope thermal generator, such as in the form of pellets of 90 SRTO4, can be used for long-term delivery of heat for the battery after activation, keeping it in a molten state. Use as thermal batteries are used almost exclusively for military applications, notably for guided missiles. They are the primary power source for many missiles such as the AIM-9 Sidewinder, MIM-104 Patriot, BGM-71 TOW, BGM-109 Tomahawk and others. In these batteries the electrolyte is immobilized when molten by a special grade of magnesium oxide that holds it in place by capillary action. This powdered mixture is pressed into pellets to form a separator between the anode and cathode of each cell in the battery stack. As long as the electrolyte is solid, the battery is inert and remains inactive. Each cell also contains a pyrotechnic heat source which is used to heat the cell to the typical operating temperature of 400 to 550 degrees Celsius. Rechargeable Configurations since the mid-1960s much development work has been undertaken on rechargeable batteries using sodium for the negative electrodes. Sodium is attractive because of its high reduction potential of minus 2.71 volts, low weight, non-toxic nature, relative abundance, availability and low cost. In order to construct practical batteries, the sodium must be in liquid form. The melting point of sodium is 98 degrees Celsius. This means that sodium-based batteries operate at high temperatures between 400 to 700 degrees Celsius, with newer designs running at temperatures between 245 to 350 degrees Celsius. Sodium sulfur The sodium sulfur battery, along with the related lithium sulfur battery employs cheap and abundant electrode materials. It was the first alkali metal commercial battery. It used liquid sulfur for the positive electrode and a ceramic tube of beta alumina solid electrolyte for the electrolyte. Insulator corrosion was a problem because they gradually became conductive and the self-discharge rate increased. This problem of dendritic sodium growth in NARS batteries was addressed in the development of the Zebra battery in 1985, which uses NaAlCl4 with Na plus beta alumina ceramic electrolyte. Because of their high specific power, NARS batteries have been proposed for space applications. A NARS battery for space use was successfully tested on the Space Shuttle mission STS-87 in 1997, but the batteries have not been used operationally in space. NARS batteries have been proposed for use in the high-temperature environment of Venus. NAR NICL2 The NAR NICL2 battery operates at 245 degrees Celsius and utilizes molten sodium tetrachloroaluminate, which has a melting point of 157 degrees Celsius, as the electrolyte. The negative electrode is molten sodium. The positive electrode is nickel in the discharged state and nickel chloride in the charged state. Because nickel and nickel chloride are nearly insoluble in neutral and basic melts, contact is allowed, providing little resistance to charge transfer. Since both NaAlCl4 and are liquid at the operating temperature, a sodium conducting beta alumina ceramic is used to separate the liquid sodium from the molten NaAlCl4. The primary elements used in the manufacture of these batteries have much higher worldwide reserves and annual production than lithium. 
It was invented in 1985 by the Zeolite Battery Research Africa Project Group at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in Pretoria, South Africa. It can be assembled in the discharged state using NaCl, Al, nickel and iron powder. The positive electrode is composed mostly of materials in the solid state, which reduces the likelihood of corrosion, improving safety. Its specific energy is 90 watt-hours per kilogram specific power of 150 with kilogram. The beta alumina solid electrolyte is unreactive to sodium metal and sodium aluminum chloride. Lifetimes of over 1,500 cycles and five years have been demonstrated with full-sized batteries, and over 3,000 cycles in eight years with 10 and 20 cell modules. The ZEBRA's liquid electrolyte freezes at 157 degrees Celsius, and the normal operating temperature range is 270 degrees Celsius to 350 degrees Celsius. Adding iron to the cell increases its power response. Zebra batteries are currently manufactured by FIAMM Sonic and are used in the Modec electric van, the IVECO daily 3.5-ton delivery vehicle, and the THNK City. In 2011 the U.S. Postal Service began testing all electric delivery vans, one powered by a Zebra battery. In 2010 General Electric announced an RNICL2 battery that it called a sodium metal halide battery, with a 20-year lifetime. Its cathode structure consists of a conductive nickel network, molten salt electrolyte, metal current collector, carbon felt electrolyte reservoir and the active sodium metal halide salts. In 2015, the company abandoned the project. Sumitomo developed a battery using a salt that is molten at 61 degrees Celsius, far lower than sodium-based batteries, and operational at 90 degrees Celsius. It offers energy densities as high as 290 watt-hours, L and 224 watt-hours per kilogram and charge, discharge rates of 1 C with a lifetime of 100-1000 charge cycles. The battery employs only non-flammable materials and neither ignites on contact with air nor risks thermal runaway. This eliminates waste heat storage or fire and explosion-proof equipment, and allows closer cell packing. The company claimed that the battery required half the volume of lithium-ion batteries and one quarter that of sodium-sulfur batteries. The cell used a nickel cathode and a glassy carbon anode. In 2014 researchers identified a liquid sodium cesium alloy that operates at 150 degrees Celsius produced 420 milliampere hours per gram. The new material was able to fully coat, or wet, the electrolyte. After 100 charge, discharge cycles, the test battery maintained about 97% of its initial storage capacity. The lower operating temperature allowed the use of a less expensive polymer external casing instead of steel, offsetting some of the increased cost of cesium when not in use. NAR NICL2 batteries are typically kept molten and ready for use because if allowed to solidify they typically take 12 hours to reheat and charge. This reheating time varies depending on the battery pack temperature and power available for reheating. After shutdown a fully charged battery pack loses enough energy to cool and solidify in 3 to 4 days. Liquid metal both magnesium antimony and more recently lead antimony were used in experiments at Ambray. The electrode and electrolyte layers are heated until they are liquid and self-segregate due to density and emissibility. They may have longer lifetimes than conventional batteries. As the electrodes go through a cycle of creation and destruction during the charge-discharge cycle which makes them immune to degradation affecting conventional battery electrodes, high operating temperatures of 400 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius lead to challenges of thermal management, safety, increased corrosion, increased self-discharge rates, complicate sealing and impose requirements on the other battery components. The three-layer nature of the battery risks short-circuiting on movement. 
The technology was proposed by in 2009 based on magnesium and antimony separated by a molten salt. Magnesium was chosen as the negative electrode for its low cost and low solubility in the molten salt electrolyte. Antimony was selected as the positive electrode due to its low cost and higher anticipated discharge voltage. In 2011 the researchers demonstrated a cell with a lithium anode and a lead antimony cathode, which had higher ionic conductivity and lower melting points. The drawback of the Li chemistry is higher cost. A Li Li plus Lickle plus Li I PBSB cell with California 0.9 BOCP operating at 450 degrees Celsius had electroactive material costs of $100 kWh and $100 per kW and a projected 25Y lifetime. Its discharge power at 1.1 A per square centimeter is only 44%. Experimental data showed 69% storage efficiency, with good storage capacity, low leakage and high maximum discharge capacity. In 2012 Ambry received funding from Marbury, Bill Gates, Kosler Ventures and Total SA. In May 2014 Ambry received a $35 million investment, allowing it to start commercial testing. By October 2014 the team achieved an operational efficiency of approximately 70% at high charge discharge rates, similar to that of pumped storage hydroelectricity and higher efficiencies at lower currents. Tests showed that after 10 years of regular use, the system would retain about 85% of its initial efficiency. In September 2014 a study described an arrangement using a molten alloy of lead and antimony for the positive electrode, liquid lithium for the negative electrode, and a molten mixture of lithium salts as the electrolyte. Storage costs using this format are estimated at $500 per kilowatt hour of electricity stored, still higher than the $100 per kilowatt hour that the U.S. Joint Center for Energy Storage Research says is needed for cost-effective adoption bit better than current alternatives that also suffer damage to electrodes on each cycle.